Hello, my name is Eddie Rocks, and welcome to the most excellent musical Monster Jam. Today, we are sharing our show on a Sunday because we were delayed from uh, the hurricane. Hurricane Matthew came through and devastated uh, the uh, coastal empire, and we were unable to get our show out on Friday as we usually do. So, we are sharing it today on a Sunday, and we are blessed to have a great individual. His name is Ricky Stokes. He is a songwriter that has actually taken a song to number one, um, and he is a gospel singer, so it seems appropriate that we would have this uh, today on Sunday. Also, uh, we filmed in Reynolds Square. Now, Reynolds Square is at the end of Abercorn, and there's a statue of uh, John Wesley in that square. Now, John Wesley, along with his brother, Charles Wesley, came to Savannah in 1735 to help establish the colony of Georgia. On their way over, they met some Germans on the ship that were singing spiritual songs, and it was then that they established how important it was to have spiritual music in the Christian experience. However, they did not stay in Savannah very long. They returned to England to share the gospel, and that's where Charles Wesley wrote 6,500 songs. That's right, 6,500 songs. So today we are filming in Riddle Square in the shadow of the great statue of John Wesley, and we are celebrating one of our local songwriters, Ricky Stokes, who had a song actually go to number one. So let's join Ricky and Will right now at Reynolds Square in downtown Savannah. My name is Will Griffiths, and this week on the Musical Monster Jam, we have Ricky Stokes. Ricky Stokes, how are you doing this week? I'm doing great, Will. Good Ricky to see Stokes, you. Ricky Stokes, I've heard that you do a little bit of gospel music, and I mean, don't know a lot about gospel music, but you're going to tell me all about it. So tell us about yourself. Well, I've lived in Savannah all my life, and uh, my whole thing started in church when Savannah Christian was just a tiny little thing. They're compassion now, but they were a tiny little church there. Well, we had three men in that church who played guitars, Carl Sack, uh, Mr. Woodward, and Mr. Smith. They were influential because as a three, four-year-old kid, I watched them play and think, man, that looks like fun. And, you know, I was a typical kid wanting to play with my G.I. Joes, but I'd take the rifles, turn them upside down, turn them in guitars, and pretend it was John Lennon of the Beatles. Well, how'd that sound back then? Not too good, <laughs> but it got better. At age 10, I got my first guitar, was goofing around with it, took a few lessons, it was just a hobby. And then, one night in 1974, on ABC, 11.30 at night, this group called KISS came on. I saw Ace Frehley and everything changed. Yeah, I had changed to get serious world, about man. it. Yep. It changed the world. Yep. I was, I learned every lick that KISS and Skinner could teach me, everything Elton John could teach me. I'm Waylon Jennings, those are the four that really made the difference. So you sing and you play guitar and you write songs, or what do you, how do you do this? Well, it just kind of comes to me. I come up with a tune and the words come and just comes together and... Well good, well good. Well tell us, tell us the name of one of the songs you wrote. Well one of the songs I wrote is called You Can Always Come Back Home. And that's my, one of my favorites. That's the one that really has opened some doors for me. Uh, I wrote that song for prison ministries. I've been doing prison ministry off and on for years. And I played it at a, at a church retreat for a guy named Chuck Day. Now, Chuck's well known in gospel music. He wrote Midnight Cry with his brother. And he's had several number one hits in that genre. He heard the song and I played the song for him. And he said, Rick, play that again. I said, okay, I played it again. He said, play it one more time. I want to make a scratch demo of that. He called me a few days later and said, I'm putting that on my album. Well, he did, and uh, it started at number 83. A few weeks later, it was at number 50-something. Then it hit 36, and then 17, and then 7. At this point, I said to my wife, I said, we may have a number one hit on our hands, chokingly. She said, you'll never do that. Luke is at number two. It was uh, McGraw with Touchdown Jesus. Yeah. The next month, our song was number one in the nation on two separate charts. And Touchdown Jesus was still number two. You can always come back home. You can always come back home. I don't care where you've been, and I, I don't care what you've done. You can always come back home. 
congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. That's very good. That song was also nominated for Song of the Year by the Inspirational Country Music Association. I got to, I was given a, an award by uh, Power Source Magazine for writing a number one. Uh, they were one of the charts we were number one in. We were also number one in Christian Voice in August and September. And got to go to the awards show and walk the red carpet. And it was a lot of fun. That does sound like a lot of fun. So where do you, uh, where do you play now? Well, right now I'm uh, in the worship team at uh, Trinity Savannah over on Highway 80 in Garden City. I also play a lot of a lot of areas. Excuse me, a lot of churches around the area. Uh, just the uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I should say, I was at Bar Church on Tybee Island, and I do you know whenever I get a chance to play the church. I also uh, have a little group uh, with some people, Mike McDougal, John. I know uh, Mike McDougal. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, Mike yeah. McDougal, some I other know guys, Mike and we. Uh, we play around town whenever we can. So, how many people are in the group? Like when you're you're normally singing, or you're playing? There's four of us. Four of you. Okay. Well, tell me, um, tell me a little bit more about Bar Church. What is the Bar Church about? Bar Church is a group of Christians who meet on Tybee Island. These are folks who don't feel like they fit in with the stained glass crowd, so to speak. Uh, they're led by Mike Phillips, who's a really incredible guy. A wonderful musician and a man of and a real man of God, in my opinion. I know Mike Phillips as well. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, uh, they meet at Benny's, which is uh, right at the end of Fort, uh, the main drag at Fourteenth Street. I know Street. right where Benny's is. <laughs> and we go in there and we like go in there and lead worship and do many concerts. Sometimes I preach and we have a great time in there. It's a wonderful group of people and it's just it's just so laid back and so much fun. And what time do you meet down there on Sundays? Uh, that starts at 10 o'clock on Sundays. 10 o'clock on Sundays. And then it goes on for? Till we finish. Till you finish. Till the Lord. I always tell people that's a, that's a place where uh, on Sunday morning, they give equal time to those with opposing views. Well, there you go. Well, there you <laughs> go. So where can we look for you to be playing here soon? You got some tours coming up? Or you? Uh, I'm trying to get some stuff going right now. It's a little slow right now, yeah. but it, it, it happens. Uh, there's a few churches I always play out of town. I'm in touch with them, trying to get some things going with them. And I'm trying to raise money to do my first CD right now. Tell me about the, um, the different kind of gospel groups. I mean, is there a lot of gospel groups out singing around right now? Is there, there a bunch of people doing this? Uh, what, well, I guess, what is the competition on gospel groups? Well, there's not as many as there used to be. Back in the 80s, you had a bunch of Southern gospel artists, and you had a bunch of contemporary artists, a bunch of urban artists. And there's a few out there still, but there's not nearly as many as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, the scene has kind of slowed up a lot. But back in its heyday, I could, I could have named a ton of groups and artists in Savannah. They're still around. They just aren't, they just aren't doing much right now. Yeah. Yeah, just um, so I guess it's hard to. Is there, I guess it's hard to make money in it. Or is it just people, just a different uh, people want to hear something different? I don't know. Uh, it's not really about the money. Yeah. You know, it's about this about spreading the gospel. Okay. And you know, but you know, you get a you get love offerings and such. And so you know, like I said, it's, it's it, it helps a little bit. So where can people find a copy of your recording app that you have? Okay, you want to hear the song that went number one? Go to ChuckDay.com. Order the album 11. It's the third cut on 11. Or you can, uh, on ChuckDay.com, you can uh, find the song. Uh, you can always come back home. You can always find, you can also find uh, on you. There's some different uh, recordings of it on YouTube also. So I was about to say, yeah, we should be able to find it on YouTube because we can usually find everything on YouTube. Yeah, you can find anything on YouTube these days. All right. I want to thank you again for being on the show this week. Thank you, Will, for all you do for the musicians in Savannah. And thank you, Rick Stokes. Pleasure to have you. Well, that was awesome. Uh, Will did another great interview there in the uh, square, and what a beautiful square, and what a beautiful day. I tell you, fall is really a nice time here in Savannah. Uh, we are past the heat for a while anyway, and we are excited to get out into the uh, downtown area and film some of the beauty that just surrounds us every day. Next week, we're checking up on another Savannah alumnus. He is actually now living in Philadelphia, and he has a band called The Power of Free, get to know who that person is next week. So until then, this is Eddie Rock signing off. I will see you soon.